I mean, from your values, okay? So for you, this is right. Why are they wrong? Because you're white, because you're superior? For what reason is it, for what reason and how do you ascertain that your culture and your cultural sensibilities is superior to everybody else's? On what basis? Tomorrow, 50 years ago, you agreed with culture, with the Qatari culture, 50 years ago. Yeah, and 100 years ago, you probably were even more severe uh, with LGBT than Qatari culture, yes? Yeah. Just a, your grandfather was more severe than the Qatari culture. So where, where is your culture anchored? How do you, uh, you know, this is what you need to ask them. And like four or five days ago, officially Germany buy gas from Qatar. Right. You know, and uh, it was very interesting. You know, they did this, you know, the oh, German, yeah. German team, yeah? yeah? The German team. Uh, if you go to Qatar, I would say that the people up there, uh, you ask the German supporters, they said we had a fantastic time. The Qatari people were very hospitable. They had a wonderful time there, yes? And it was safer, the women are saying, that it's safer here than in Germany or in, in England. When after the drinks, the people, they touch them and do all sorts of horrible yeah. things, yeah? Over there, people are very respectful. Mm -hmm. So uh, they really don't have a leg to stand on. You know what it is, brother? They're hypocrites. You know, they talk about the rights of uh, a woman uh, not to wear a scarf, okay? And they say, oh, you should not force the woman. But it's okay to bomb her. It's okay to kill her. It's okay to kill her children. They can send the fighter aircraft and the bombers and they can kill thousands of women and children. That's okay. But if you say that she has to wear hijab, ooh, you, you're putting hijab on her head, you're making her wear hijab, this is the uh, injustice on her. What about when you go and kill her children and kill her, kill her and kill her family? That's okay. Nobody's fighting for those rights. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's saying, oh, women's rights because we shouldn't kill them and bomb them. They're hypocrites. They've got no leg to stand on, really. They're just hypocrites, really, literally. The last time I remember when England hosted the World Cup in 1966, homosexuality was illegal. Yeah. Look, <laughs> this uh, Malala, Malala from uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, yes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Taliban, they, they shot her because she wanted to go to school. She's become this champion. They bring her to Europe. They give her medical treatment. Now she's addressing the United Nations. They're all crying. That, oh, this is like freedom and free. Yes. What about her sisters that you were killing in Afghanistan? Yes. What about her children you were killing in Afghanistan in the thousands in Iraq? Yeah. How many Malalas have they killed themselves in Iraq and in Afghanistan? Tens of thousands going into the millions of refugees that destroyed their country. And they're championing, they're crying for Malala. What about the tears for all the people they killed there? They're just hypocrites. Why They've got no leg to stand on. Anything about Russia when, when the World Cup was in Russia? Right, exactly. Yes, when the World Cup was in Russia. They never said nothing about human rights in Russia or anything like that. Yeah? It, they, they, they're just hypocrites. They've got no leg to stand. Look, I'm not saying that you shouldn't call out any oppression anywhere in the world. If somebody is being oppressed, yes, you have to call it out. But if you only call out some oppression, and you yourself are a zalim, you create zulm in the world, you're killing millions of people. You know, your World Bank, the IMF, are, are starving people around the world, right? Because of your economic benefit. Yeah, you have economic hitmen. They go around the world, they destroy people's economies, right? They put people in poverty for decades, for generations, yeah? Where are the tears for those people? Where are the human rights for those people? It's okay when they're filling our pockets, yeah, everybody's crying about, oh, you know, the, the labor, they're only being paid one dollar. Everybody, I shop at Primark sometimes. If you're buying a t-shirt at Primark, you're supporting child labor, whether you like it or you don't. That's the reality. By so, the England t-shirts are made by Bangladesh. Yeah. And how much are they getting paid? 21 pence. Exactly. 21 pence. Everybody who shops at Primark, everybody who shops at this, even the expensive stores, where do they get, you look at the label, where is it made? Bangladesh, India, okay, China. You think they're paying them $10 an hour? Even, even Apple uh, products like iPhone made in China. Yeah, yeah, China. exactly. You think they're paying them $10 an hour? They're paying them 50 cents an hour. Yeah, we all, we're all buying those shoes. We're all buying those, uh, those t-shirts and those clothes, right? From the same, same labor that they're, they're claiming is an injustice because of, you know, Qatar is doing it or this. It's a hypocrite, really. Wallahi, these are hypocrites.
You know, unfortunately, when you are yourself morally bankrupt, the easiest thing you can do is you can point fingers at everybody else. And so this is what they do. They point fingers at everybody else. I'm not saying that England is not a beautiful country. It's a beautiful country. I'm not saying that it hasn't got beautiful things here. There is justice here. There is fair. Look, they have, we have Speaker's Corner. I can come here, I can say what I like. I can say against the king. I can say against the government. I can say against other people. Okay, this is free. Yes, I agree. There are things in England that we have to acknowledge that are amazing. And in fact, you know, many people tell me that even in Europe, you can't do this in Europe, what I'm doing here, right? So yes, where there is good, we have to recognize the good. But where there is bad, we have to recognize the bad as well. And when we do something that's bad, we have to call it out. Uh, and the reality is for me, I went to Qatar, I saw my first hand. I spoke to uh, tourist, uh, you know, supporters from South America, from Asia, from Europe you know, Wales, Ireland, England, everywhere. And their experience of Qatar is very different from what the media are telling them. Completely chalk and cheese, really. In fact, they're telling me that our own media is they're lying, they're lying to us. That's what they're saying out there, you know? So the hypocrite, look, the opening ceremony, the opening ceremony, the BBC, they, they cut it out. Yeah? It was a disabled child with no legs. Well, it was, a disabled, had, it was a young man, half of, half of his body was missing yeah. and he interacted with the Morgan Stanley and he read a very Morgan small, Freeman. Morgan Freeman, <laughs> sorry, Morgan Stanley, Mor the company, uh, Morgan Freeman, I beg your pardon, right, sorry, that, that's my dyslexia, yeah? Um, what did they do? They edited that part out. They didn't want to show the people that. Why? Why? Because one verse of the Quran, why? Because they're threatened. They don't want positive aspects of Islam to be promoted around the world because they want to create this illusion. Muslims being backward, being unsophisticated, uneducated, that Islam has nothing to offer. But the societies here are disintegrating. The society in Western Europe and in, in America are disintegrating. Why? Because materialism is the God. The new God is materialism and the drink and the drugs are ruining society. And Islam is the only religion that has a solution for stability, for cohesion, and to solve the problems of society that we have today. Only Islam. And they don't want this. But look at the beauty. The more they struggle, the more they struggle to try to defame Islam, the more Islam is growing. The more they try to oppress it and suppress it, the more Islam is growing. And it's growing within the educated people, the young people around the 27, around 27 years old, and 72% of the converts to Islam are women. 